you know, it, it's interesting you say that because, you know, I'm just constantly DCA and into these markets, but I am like looking for that point of like, where, where should I, where should I take profits? But I understand exactly what you are saying. Like, you know, we're kind of at that point where you, you've seen Polygon Matic, you know, three X in, in the, you know, you've seen the, I just sold all mine. the, the run it's yeah. made and it's like, you know, is this rally going to continue? But then, you know, when you look at the geopolitical aspect of what's going on in China right now, how much of an impact do you think that's going to have on these markets? Like I'm talking in the next six months of yeah. what's going. So uh, for China, it's a very speculative market to kind of project where we're going to be heading in the next six months to the year. Uh, Cause the reality is, is China's the second largest economy. So just like the U S anything that's going to happen or take place, is going to happen at a very slow pace. Uh, generally, a domino falling. Yes, it sounds quick, you know, when speaking, you know, but when it comes to reality, a domino takes three months to fall before it hits the next domino, and you know, it, it, it comes, it comes as prolonged issue. Uh, so for China right now, it comes down to something known as uh, local government financial vehicles. These LFGVs are uh, pretty much financial institutions, local banks that. Uh, issued bonds and sold bonds in a bond market to artificially prop up their giant real estate bubble. Uh, so let me make that just basic for the audience and watching. And that was Evergrande. That, that was the Evergrande you're speaking of, because we remember this event, what, months ago. So that, that's what you're talking about though, right? Exactly. Mm. Now, what's crazy and what people don't talk about is that Evergrande was like the hundredth default. The first default took, pl took place back in 2014 then 2015, then three in 2016, and then so on, snowball, snowball, all the way up to where we're at with Evergrande today. The reason why Evergrande is so important is these pre-sales, the, the real estate market in China was solely propped up by these vehicles, which were being sold to investors with high yields. They were promising investors a bond that was backed by the governments. They were going to get a short-term maturity bond that would appreciate pretty significantly over six years, because they're investing in infrastructure and investing it all into real estate. Fast forward, you know, a decade from over the last decade to, to where we're at today, 225 million square feet of these properties, masses and massive amount. I mean, we're talking city size, like construction is not finished and is underdeveloped. So there has been no cash flow. There has been no um, nothing finished is that all these investors are paying off mortgages for properties that don't even exist yet. And since there's no cash flow and such an over amount of credit or actually, sorry, debt in the economy, there, there's, only, there's only one option. And that is either they're going to print money to bail these corporations out of this debt, or we're going to see a lot of defaults take place on these loans.